Uh, welcome to lecture six. Let's start with a problem. Uh, if you um, have edition six of the textbook, the problem number is 222A. Um, the problem is this. We're asked to find a, a product of sums expression uh, for the following. We have A complement, B complement, or A complement, C, D, or A complement, D, E complement. And again, we're looking for a product of sums uh, expression. And um, I'll just review quickly. This is similar to a problem we did before uh, where we noticed that this initial expression is a sum of products form. Uh, and the reason we say this is that you can see the sum because you see the the plus signs and what is being summed together well products simple products of the boolean variables and so this is a uh, this is currently this is currently sum of products form and we want to get it into a product of sums and just as we did before uh, what we'll do this time is to use the following property. If you have a Boolean function, uh, we'll just say a Boolean function f, which may be a function of uh, any number of Boolean variables. If we complement that twice, we get back the same Boolean function. So that's what we're going to do in this case as well, is we're going to say that uh, this term that we're starting with is equal to the same as A complement, B complement, or A complement, C, D, or A complement, D, E complement, and then we're going to complement that twice. And I would encourage you, uh, as you probably suspect now, uh, what we're going to do is use De Morgan's theorems uh, repeatedly to try to get this into a product of sums form. So I encourage you to try to do this on your own and then come back and check your work. So as I say, the, um, I encourage you basically then to go ahead and stop the video and give that a shot. Okay, so I hope you had luck with that, but if not, then let's... Uh, uh, see how we would proceed in this. So to make everything very explicit, my first step here will be as follows. The two complements that are on the outside here in this expression, I'm going to do it one at a time. First I'll complement the bracketed expression and then I will complement what we get there. So in complementing this expression in the brackets, we notice that what we're doing here is finding the complement of a sum. And we know that one of De Morgan's theorems tells us that the complement of a sum is the product of the individual complements. So we have the complement of A complement B complement. As I say, here's A complement B complement, and now we're going to take the complement of that. And we want to take the product of that with the complements of the other terms. So we have A complement CD complement and A complement, D, E complement, complement. 
and that actually is uh, the first step in calculating uh, the complement of what's in the bracket and once again now you can see we have the complement of a sum is the product notice that if we wish we could put dots here to really make it clear that this is a product so this is a product of the complements of the individual terms but we don't want to forget now that uh, that all of that was inside other parentheses with still another complement outside and we'll worry about that later for right now for the first several steps we'll just carry that along and we won't worry about that until uh, the end of the problem now uh, the next step will be to use the other of De Morgan's theorems. We, we just used the one that said the complement of a sum is the product of the individual complements. Now we're going to use the one that, that says the complement of a product is the sum of the individual complements because each one of these terms that we have here is the product, excuse me, is the complement. You see each one of them is complemented and each one of the individual terms is a product. So we want to, we have the complement of a product here, the complement of a product here, and the complement of a product here. And so in each case, we want to use the, the De Morgan's Law that says the complement of a product is the sum of the individual complements. So let me write these outer brackets and the complement sign that's on the outside and now we'll work on these three terms on the inside so the first one becomes a complement complement or b complement complement and then that is ended with a complement complement or c complement or d complement and then that is ended with a complement complement or D or excuse me D complement or E complement complement now once again you can see in each case we have said that the complement of a product is the sum of the complements of the individual terms so here we've taken the sum of A complement complement and B complement complement. Here we have A complement complement, C complement, D complement, A complement complement, D complement, and E complement complement. Now, as I said before in a, in a previous lecture, I'm trying to show essentially every single step, but some of you will not need to uh, show every step along the way like this because, for instance, you will recognize right away that A complement complement is A, B complement complement is B, and so on. So let's go ahead and make that simplification now at this point. So we have A complement complement is A, B complement complement is B. Here we'll have A or C complement or D complement and A or D complement or E. And uh, the next step now will be to go ahead and multiply out everything um, in the interior and simplify it as much as we uh, can. So A ended with A. Uh, we could write down AA but remember that anything ended with itself is itself so A ended with A simply gives us A maybe maybe I'll go ahead for right now just one for this one last problem I'll go ahead and write out everything I won't simplify as I go but in future problems we will try to start simplifying as we go so for right now I'll just say AA or AC complement or a d complement or a b or b c complement or b d complement 
that is the result of ending the first term with the second term. And then we also will just bring down the third term for right now. A or D complement or E. Now, one student asked me in a recent class if it was possible to simplify early before, in, in a problem like this, is it possible to simplify early before uh, getting to the final result? Or is it better to go ahead and get multiply everything out and then simplify at the end? Well, it's definitely not only permitted, but in fact much better to simplify as much as you can as you're going along because otherwise you'll have so many terms. For instance, if we look here, we have one, two, three, four, five, six terms in this first parentheses, three terms in the second parentheses. So if we don't do any simplification, we'll have 18 terms, and that's quite a lot of writing. But fortunately, we're going to be able to um, make it much shorter than that. So let's see how that will go. Well, as I was saying just a moment ago, uh, AA in this first parenthesis is simply equal to A. Now, uh, you might remember that we have the property, I'll, I'll write it in here, that X or with XY is the same thing as X ended with 1 or with XY which is the same thing as X ended with 1 or Y. And since 1 or with anything is 1, this is the same thing as X ended with 1. And 1 ended with anything is that thing itself. And so this is X. So we have to summarize here, X or with XY is X. And that's something that's very handy to know. Because if we start bringing down these other terms now in this, in this first parenthetical expression, watch what happens. Okay, we've already said that AA is equal to A. The next thing that we would bring down is AC complement. But A or with AC complement is simply A by this same property that we've just derived. It says X or with XY is X and this is that that is equivalent to what we're doing here. A or with AC prime is just A. So in some in fact some people call this the absorption property because it's as though AC prime is being absorbed into that A. Likewise when we look at bringing down the next term A D complement that also is absorbed into the A. AB is absorbed into the A. In fact, A ended with anything could just simply be absorbed into this A that we already have. Now, BC complement is not absorbed because it doesn't have any A in it. So we need to bring that down. BC complement. And likewise, we need to bring down the BD complement. But we can see that by using this absorption property, which is one of the simplification properties that we've talked about earlier, we are able to uh, reduce the number of terms in the first parentheses from 6 to 3. So this makes a big difference in the amount of work that we have to do. And now for the second parentheses, we'll just bring it down A or D complement or E. So we want to and those together and then after we've anded them together we will take one more complement. Okay so let's now see how this will go. And now this time I will begin to simplify as I go. So if, when we uh, begin to and these two terms together the first thing we see is AA. And as we already know AA is equal to A. Now the next term that we would have would be AD complement. 
but that AD complement, if we brought that down, that would just be absorbed into the A. So we won't even write it down. The next term would be AE, and similarly AE would be absorbed into the A. So now we go to multiplying out this term with these terms. When we have BC complement ended with A, well, that's the same thing as ABC complement, and ABC complement is absorbed into the A. The next term would be B, B C complement, D complement. Now that doesn't have an A in it, so we need to go ahead and bring that down. B, C complement, D complement. And the next term would be B, C complement, E. The next term uh, as we now begin to end this third term with these terms, the next one would be ABD complement, but the ABD complement would be absorbed into the A, so we don't need to write it down. The next one would be B, D complement, D complement. We know that D complement, D complement is the same as D complement, so that would just become B, D complement. And then finally, BD complement ended with E would be BD complement E. But uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and write that down for just a moment here. So we would have BD complement E. But if you think, if you think again of this absorption property, and think of BD complement as being X and E as being Y, then you see that BD complement ORD with BD complement E, that's exactly like this, and it's just BD complement. So actually, we don't need this term. It's just absorbed into BD complement, and that uh, terminates that process. Now, if you take a careful look, you notice that you can make even a little more simplification because the first term here has BD complement in it, just like this term does. So this BD complement, C complement, can be absorbed into BD complement, and we just then will have BD complement or BC complement E. And so we see that a very substantial amount of simplification has occurred. Now we're finally ready uh, to take care of the final complement in this problem and to finish it all up. So we remember again that one of De Morgan's laws tells us that the complement, notice this is a sum, so the complement of a sum is the product of the individual complements. And so we have a complement ended with B D complement complement ended with B C complement E complement and uh, finally the A complement we'll just bring down. For B, D complement, complement, we use De Morgan's theorem that tells us that the complement of a product is the sum of the individual complements. So we have B complement or D complement, complement, which is D. And then for the last one, uh, once again, the complement of a product is the sum of the individual complements. So B complement ORD with C complement complement, which is C ORD with E complement. And we are now done. This is a product of sums.
we see that we have uh, a product because these are joined or connected together by these dots which represents the AND operation so we have a product and each one of the individual terms is a sum. You could think of this first one, it, don't be uh, misled by this, this could be considered as the uh, uh, sum we have here a complement if you wish we could uh, think of that as uh, uh, a complement or with uh, zero uh, so it, this is still it fits the uh, terms of being a uh, product of sums so that would be the way that we do do this problem and I hope that uh, um, you were able at least to come close to this. I'm not, I wouldn't say I would expect that you would have been able to have completed this entire problem on your own, but I hope that you were able to come close. So that's uh, a reminder of how we go from sum of products form to product of sums form. And now um, a different problem. And this one um, if you have the same textbook is uh, 225A it tells us the following the function f which is a function of the boolean variables p, q, r, and s is defined as being equal to R complement ORD with PQ and then that sum is ended with S and what we are challenged to do in this problem is to find A SOP, a sum of products expression, for F complement. So we're given F and we want to find F complement and put it in a sum of products expression. Well, the first, uh, you might be able to go ahead and do this on your own, and I would certainly encourage you to, if you think you can, to go ahead and stop the video and give it a shot and then come back. Uh, so now if you've tried to do that, let's uh, all work it together. So since we're going to be dealing with F complement, I'll go ahead and take the complement from the very beginning. So we have R complement or PQ ended with S and then we want to complement that entire thing. So um, what I would recommend doing here is going ahead and multiplying out everything we have uh, in the interior we will have our complement S or P Q S and then that is complemented and so now we can use uh, the Morgan's Law that says that the complement of a sum is the product of the individual complements you see here we have a sum because of the plus sign so that's why we want to regard this as the complement of a sum is equal to the product of the individual complements so we have R complement S complement that's the complement of the first term and we want to and that with the complement of the second term P Q S complement. 
So one last time then, we see complement of a sum is the product of the individual complements. Here's the product, you see the dot, product of the complements of these individual terms. Okay. So we continue on the next line and uh, we'll go ahead and uh, take each one of these terms is complemented and so uh, and each one of these terms is also a product so we will just now on both of them use the the De Morgan's law that says the complement of a product is the sum of the individual complements so when we complement that first term we will get r complement complement which of course is r or with S complement and then that will be ended with P complement or Q complement or S complement. So you can see that in both of these we've used the fact that the Morgan's law that says the complement of a product is the sum of the individual complements. Now notice at this point that this is a product of sums form. Got, we have a product, you see the dot right here, and each one of these is a simple sum of the Boolean variables. So we have a product of sums form right now. But remember what we're asked to find up here is a sum of products and that's very easy to do because all we have to do now is just multiply this R out this all out so we have R P complement or R Q complement or R S complement or P complement S complement or Q complement, S complement, or the last term will be S complement, S complement, which is the same thing as S complement. And now, now technically, we have done all the problem asked for because this is a sum of products expression right here this is sum of products and we could we could stop right now and 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 there's no way that if the if those if if these right here were the only instructions you have then nobody could count you off for giving this answer down here however um, if, if somebody tells you to find a minimal expression or to try to simplify as much as possible then you should go one more step and notice that once again we use this absorption rule notice that here we have s prime alone this last term is s prime alone and so any any one of these products that involves s prime the we have q prime s prime P prime S prime, R S prime, all of those will be absorbed into the S prime. So we can write this much more uh, economically as just R P prime or R Q prime or S prime. And that is one way to arrive at the answer for this problem. This is a sum of products expression for uh, F complement. Now, uh, that's not, you know, going in the order that I did is certainly not the only way you could do this. Uh, you could have, um, up here at the beginning, you could have taken, uh, you could have used a Morgan's theorem from the beginning and said that the complement of a product is the sum of the individual complements 
rather than multiplying out first. But so there's different ways you can go about doing these problems, uh, but this is one uh, valid way. So now I'd like to discuss at least one more problem, uh, which um, in the current textbook is problem 229A. And um, what the book asks us to do in this problem is the following. We have x or y ended with x complement or z is equal to x, z, or x complement y. Now, if we uh, used uh, the algebra, as we have in previous problems, I think we could easily prove that this is correct. Let's just try that real quickly. So we would have, uh, if we if we end these terms together, x ended with x complement. Remember, any variable ended with itself, excuse me, any variable ended with its complement is zero. So when we have x ended with x complement, we get nothing at all. Then we have x z or x complement y or y z well I guess on second thought maybe I spoke too soon maybe it's not so obvious and not so easy to prove that the left hand side is equal to the right hand side in fact uh, you see that our x z term matches with that, this x z x complement y matches with this x complement y but this yz term that appears on the left doesn't seem to appear on the right at all. So there is some question, uh, perhaps, uh, whether or not this initial equation is true or not. Now we're going to learn some techniques in the next chapter for uh, answering questions like this in a, in a very efficient manner. But um, for right now, what we'll do is we'll say, well, is there, you know, is there some brute force method other than algebraic that uh, we could use to try to prove the equivalence of these uh, of the two sides of this equation, either prove or disprove? And in fact, there is, and that's the truth table. And in, and in fact, that's what this problem asks us to do. It says prove that this equation is true using truth tables. So let's see how this goes, see how we would use a truth table to um, evaluate the two sides of this equation. Now, uh, we've hinted at this a little bit already. Um, I'll call this the left-hand side of the equation. Well, I guess I'll just wait. I guess that's not necessary. Let's just proceed like this. Remember that uh, on a truth table, what we want to put in the leftmost side of the truth table are the independent variables. And uh, whether we're looking at the left-hand side or the right-hand side, the independent variables here are x, y, and z. So let's make three columns here for x, y, and z. And now if we're going to evaluate the left-hand side, it would probably be nice to have a, a column for x ordered with y and another column for x complement ordered with z and then a final column with x or y ended with x complement or z and for the right hand side uh, we'll have x y z and then one column for x z one column for x complement y and a final column for x z or x complement 
Why? Okay, so let's see how this will go. So there's one truth table, or it will be in a moment. And here will be the truth table for the right hand side. Now, uh, as we said the other day when we talked about the topic of truth tables, the truth table is just an exhaustive listing of all the possibilities. So we want to make sure that we consider every possible combination of the Boolean variables. And it's best to do this in a systematic way. So we start with 000, zero, zero and then 001, zero, zero, 010, zero, zero, 011, one, 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 zero, zero, 101, zero, one, 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 zero, and 111. One, one. Those are all the possible combinations of X, Y, and Z. And of course, we're going to consider the same ones over here when we look at the right-hand side. So in short, what we're going to do here is we're going to calculate the left-hand side under all possible combinations of the variables, calculate the right hand side under all possible combinations of the variables, and prove, hopefully, that they are always the same. So let's see how this goes. Well, if we go over here to the left hand side, we see that the first column here that we have to compute is actually simply the OR of the X column and the Y column. So if we OR these two things, well, let me show you a, a quick way to do this. First of all, we notice that for the last four entries, we're definitely going to get one. Now, how do I know this? Well, it's because in the last four lines, x is equal to one. And remember, this column that we're computing is x ordered with y. Well, if x is equal to one, then that becomes one ordered with y. But remember, one ordered with anything is always one. So that's how we can quickly say that the last four lines must be one. Now by the same kind of reasoning we can also say that the two lines above that must be one because in those two lines y is equal to one. But in the first two lines we uh, x is equal to zero and y is equal to zero and if both of them are equal to zero then we have the situation zero or with zero and that is indeed zero. So the first two become zero. Now let's look at x complement ordered with z. Well, uh, if, if as long as you're alert, you can do this one rather quickly as well. Remember that in the first four lines, x is equal to zero. So if x is equal to zero, then x complement is equal to one. So x complement is equal to one in the first four lines, and therefore this column this x complement or z becomes one or z in the first four lines. And again, one ordered with anything is one. So we get one, 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 one. Now, uh, if we look at z for a moment, we see that in this column, excuse me, in this line, or that row, in that row, z is equal to one. And so x complement ordered with z must be one there. And likewise, in the last row, z is equal to 1. So x complement ordered with z must be 1 there. And now we only have the fifth row and the seventh row to think about. And in each of those two rows, x is equal to 1 and z is equal to 0. But if x is equal to 1, then x complement is 0. So we have 0 for x complement and zero for z, 
and zero ord with zero is indeed zero. So that completes the x complement or z column. And now the last column is simply the product of these two columns that we have just calculated. In other words, we want to and those two columns together to get the result in the last column. Well, remember, zero ended with anything is zero. So we get zero here and here and here and here. But in all the other rows, we have two ones, and one ended with one is one. So one here, 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 and here. And that completes the truth table for the left-hand side of this equation. Now we want to do the truth table for the right-hand side of the equation and see if the two sides of the equation are indeed equal to each other under uh, all possible combinations of the variables. Okay, so the first column that we need to calculate for the right-hand side is xz. And uh, we can say uh, immediately, remember, zero ended with anything is zero. So wherever x is zero, xz must be zero. And, of course, x is equal to zero in the first four rows. So we can do this. Uh, in the same way, z is equal to zero in the fifth row and in the seventh row. So in both of those rows, xz is also equal to zero. The only way that xz will not be equal to zero is if both x and z are equal to one, and that is the case here in the sixth row and also in the eighth row. So we have one here and here. Now, uh, I encourage you to try to do the uh, x prime y row uh, column at the x prime y column yourself uh, quickly and then we'll do it together. Okay, so I hope your reasoning here was uh, something along the following lines. If we look at x complement here, uh, we realize that x complement is equal to zero whenever x is equal to one and x is equal to one in the last four rows. So since x is 1, x complement is 0, and 0 ended with anything is 0, so we're definitely going to get 0 in the last four rows. Now, y is 0 in the first two rows. And finally, we see that in, in the third and fourth rows, x is equal to 0, which means x complement is 1, and y is 1, and 1 ended with 1 is 1. So that completes that column. And now to do the final column, which represents the value of the right-hand side of the equation, we simply need to OR these two columns that we've just calculated. And 0 ORed with 0 is 0. Same again, 0 ORed with 0 is 0. 0 ORed with 1 is 1. 0 ORed with 1 is 1. 0 ORed with 0 is 0. 1 ORed with 0 is 1. 0 with 0 is 0. 1 ORed with 0 is 1. And now, if we finally compare these two functions, the left-hand side of the equation and the right-hand side of the equation, for every possible combination of variables, we do indeed see 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. They match in every possible combination of the variables. And so by using the truth table, we have verified that this equation is indeed correct. So now for the problems for this uh, lecture. Problem 6.1 says which of the given expressions is an equivalent product of sums expression for a prime bc or a prime b prime c or cd prime? And you're given four expressions there listed. And then um, 6.2, if f of w, x, y, z is equal to x, or y, z ended with w or x prime, which of the following is a correct SOP, sum of products expression, 
for f prime. And you have these four choices. So good luck.